Hi guys, welcome back to part two of the uh, Stefan Spencer website critique stroke tool uh, <laughs> assessment, I guess. Um, so yeah, thank you for taking the effort if you're up early in the morning or late at night. Uh, we appreciate it and uh, hopefully you're going to get some value from the session. If you want to speak to us, then please uh, raise your hand, submit your speak request and uh, we'll get you in the room and, and we're going to yeah, have a good session. It's going to be quite an intimate session. So we look forward to, to speaking to you and, and working through your sites and s analyzing some tools. So I'm just going to hand straight over. Yes, very right. intimate. We've got candles going and everything. <laughs> <laughs> uh, some soft music. All right. Uh, welcome back uh, to those of you who have uh, uh, woken up early or stayed up late. So for me, it's 10 p.m. at night here in uh, Los Angeles. I don't know where you are in the world, but um, yeah, we are going to pick up where we left off. But first, I'd like to get a sense from you guys. How much time do you want to spend on more critiques versus how much time do you want to spend on um, looking at all the different tools, kind of uh, a, a look through my tool set. So let's uh, let's actually use the polling capabilities. So here I'm going to start a poll. And my question is, what should we do? <laughs> Option one, mostly site critiques. And option two, mostly tool um, demos. All right, so here we go. Um, actually, I'm going to add another one. Let's do half and half. All right. Go ahead and... Take the te take the quiz or not quiz the poll, please. Should be there for you for uh, next minute or two. Mostly tool demos, half and half, half and half. Love the interactiveness of it. It's exciting. <laughs> <laughs> All right, keep voting. All right, so far half and half is winning. Mostly tool demos is coming in from behind. Oh my goodness. <laughs> All right, we'll give it another 20 seconds. All right, everybody take the poll. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4. Three, two, one. Okay. Half and half. 62% of you want half and half. Good deal. Let's do it. So we'll start with uh, picking up where we left off with site critiques. Uh, we already have uh, Thor raising his hand asking uh, to get critiqued, and that's bro science. So we'll pull up uh, the bro science uh, Link Detox Report, we'll pull up some other tools and analyze bro science. We'll use some tools we haven't used before, so that'll give us a, a little bit of an um, introduction to a few different tools. So let me share my screen with you guys. All right, so hopefully you're seeing my screen. Let me know if you don't. Is that coming through, Andrew? Yeah, that's working fine. And Thor's okay. entered the room as well. So Thor, can uh, can we hear your audio? Are you able to speak? Okay. Hello, I'm here. Hey. Hey. Yeah. Hey. Nice to How talk you? with you. Good. Good. So um, I, I didn't do the classification. 
of your anchor text, but sure. still this is a pretty uh, uh, valid report. And uh, <laughs> yeah, you actually are not fair and too hot. I think you might you might beat the uh, other guy, Peter from um, Australia, <laughs> with, with your detox risk score. Holy cow, that's uh, that's not good. Yeah, it's shocking. Yeah. So, how did you fare with the August first update? Uh, we lost like fifty percent of our rankings. Fifty percent of your rankings. Holy cow. Yeah. That sucks. Okay, so this is um, definitely one of your Achilles heel, maybe if, maybe the Achilles heel is yeah, your, your link that. profile. It's pretty bad. So 59% of your backlinks are high or above risk in uh, detox risk. Okay. That's the majority of your links. Yeah. Wow. And then if we look at the distribution of uh, LRT Power Trust of the linking pages, 98%. It's a shockingly high percentage. 98% are as zero out of 100 in Power Trust. Mm -hmm. So that means that out of all of the pages that are linking to you, 98 out of 100 have a zero in uh, the combination of importance and trust that Link Research Tools uses as their uh, approximation of trust rank and, and page rank. Yeah, so that's, that, that's problematic. Now, one thing we haven't looked at yet that I'll share with you um, inside of Link research tools and in particular and link detox also in the BLP tool backlink profiler is this LVT, which is link velocity trends. This is a very important metric, a very important insight into what's happening with your link profile, because if it's heading in the negative direction, then uh, that means you're losing ground instead of gaining ground. We want a positive link velocity trend. We want a, we want growth in the quantity and quality of the links that are pointing to your site, right? But it's actually heading the other direction. And you can see that because most of the activity is over here at the zero and minus side of things versus in the positive direction. So I don't know what's um, what's happening here for you, but from my perspective, it looks like it's a toxic link profile with uh, a majority of links being toxic and a downtrend in link velocity. And uh, let's have a quick look at a few other uh, things. Let's let's look at the anchor tax distribution as well. Um, so you mentioned to me previously that you don't really do do SEO. You don't do link building. So uh, yeah, is is that fair to say? Like yes, that's that's definitely fair to say. We've uh, never done any link building efforts we don't have any link building efforts on our on our end so i have no idea where all these are coming from uh maybe a competitor i don't know but definitely need to take a look at this yeah yeah so because i did not do the anchor text um uh classification it's not showing me the the breakdowns but we can see individual anchor text in the reports here uh, in, in the uh, raw data. So if we look at a hundred pages per per page, uh, we'll, we'll see what some of these anchors look like. Sure. So here we have Dorian Yates calves as an anchor. Uh, Greg Plitt quotes man versus kangaroo boxing match. 
Pics, photos, memes never skip leg day. Minivan family stickers, moreover. Okay, so there's a lot of weird stuff. Do these sound like titles of blog posts yes. or anything that you posted? Absolutely do, yeah. From okay. really old blog posts. Really old blog posts, okay. Would you say that the majority of your blog posts are evergreen content or are, uh, would they be mostly ephemeral as in like uh, uh, most of the content that is like older content is just you know uh, viral news that are not you know relevant today okay and, and what was the what was the thinking behind creating uh, kind of viral newsy posts was it to get links was it to get um, <coughs> social shares uh, uh, what was the yeah. reason? In the beginning, like four years ago, we were only focusing on uh, social traffic. So we created loads and loads of, you know, these viral posts and they're still just sitting there somewhere. Did you have some success with the viral posts? Oh yeah, really good. That's how we made our first money. Okay. And then what did you do uh, to shift your strategy when that wasn't, uh, really getting you the, the results uh, eventually. Yeah, we just started doing uh, like more in-depth uh, keyword research and, and on-page optimization for a, a few, uh, not as many articles, but, you know, more strategized. Okay. So you're doing SEO, you're just not doing link building. Yeah. And the SEO that you're doing is keyword research, it's content optimization, is it also technical SEO? Uh, I don't really think I'm a technical SEO, no, but, okay. but yeah, on page. Right, well, on well, yeah. well, let me give you a, a quick run through on some of the technical SEO that you might want to consider doing. And this okay. goes for all of you guys, um, because technical, technical SEO is like the foundation that you build, uh, a solid house or, you know, building out of if you have a weak uh, or shaky foundation you're building on on something that's potentially going to fall apart <clears throat> so if you do great link building and keyword research and so forth and you have really lousy technical seo that's uh potentially going to not not get you the what, what you're hoping for so um let's let's go to Science.co slash robots.txt as a starting point. We'll also look at things like page speed and um, all right. So this is a pretty typical robots.txt file for a, a WordPress blog. Thing is, is it doesn't uh, have a sitemap uh, directive there. It really should. Did you create a sitemaps file and then uh, submit it to Google through Google Search Console? Yes, uh, I, I think it, I did so through the, uh, just through the Yoast plugin, I'm sure. So I think it's sitemap index.xml. Yeah, okay. So it's just a best practice to include the sitemap uh, directive in robots.txt that's called auto discovery and means that uh, you don't have to worry about submitting the sitemap through Google Search Console and also Bing Webmaster Tools. Let's just have a quick look at what your sitemaps look like. It's pretty standard because it's been generated out of Yoast. A lot of old posts. How many posts do you write or do you publish a week currently? Uh, currently, uh, three or, or three or something, three or four. Okay, three or four. What's the end result of these posts? Like, what what are you seeing out of that effort? 
What do you mean? Just like traffic and, and sales? I don't know. Well, I mean, like you're, you've, you've chosen to blog three times a week. Uh, wh why are you doing that? Like, what, what's, the, what's the end game there? What are you seeing as the return on that investment? Uh, just getting more traffic through different keywords. Okay. Is that, is that working for you? Like, are, are you seeing in Google Search Console that those recent blog posts are the, what's driving a lot of the organic traffic? It was working until, you know, 1st of August. Yeah, for sure. Okay. But it's no longer working? I mean, we dropped in rankings, but and since then we've been, you know, sort of sort of put everything on pause but but okay. uh, yeah so are you still uh blogging regularly uh, but it's not three times a week or you just you've stopped blogging like what's going on now right right now we're just uh waiting for you know expert opinions and and all that before putting out too much content new content okay. got it all right well let, let's see what you're doing and I can give you some expert opinion on uh, what you should be doing so that we get you more of the result that you're after, which is the traffic and the uh, rankings and all that. Thanks. And, and do you have any really successful uh, link bait campaigns that have just been link magnets for you? I haven't really looked into it if there if there are any blog posts that have more links than other. Okay. Well, that's pretty important. Let's have a look. We're going to uh, pull up uh, SEMrush is one of them, and another is Ahrefs. Let's get a sense for what's going right here and what's going wrong. Uh, first place I start to get a sense for the health of the site uh, in Ahrefs is the organic uh, the organic tab, which we'll slowly load here. It's, um, seems like when they're screen sharing turned on, the page load time is pretty bad. Okay, so let's. Let's have a look. Do you use Ahrefs? I think we have an account, yeah. Just recently signed up. Okay, it's a great tool. We're gonna to click on organic search. So that's the, the tab that I start with. You can see as we're waiting for that to load that the uh, referring domains has really taken a roller coaster ride. It's it's very much on the downtrend currently. Mm -hmm. But yeah, the organic organic search tab that's what shows you how things are going in terms of your organic uh, traffic and your organic keywords. Typically, these track together. Here you see the August 1st update fell off a cliff, both with the organic traffic and the organic keywords. Organic keywords means you are ranking for these keywords. Currently you're ranking for 68,000 organic keywords. And your organic traffic is about 100,000 a month, which is not bad. I mean, you're you're at the same level you were at the beginning of uh, this year, but you lost all that ground you gained uh, over the last uh, nine months, which is unfortunate. So now let's look at your top pages. These are the pages that are really giving you the 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 bulk of the I get get they're, they're the standout winners here on your website. Best steroids, legal steroid alternatives, best HGH supplements, 
legal steroids, steroids for weight loss, HGH results. Are these landing pages or are these content pages? Like sales pages or content pages? They're a mix of both. Yeah, they sound more like sales pages to me without having yeah. uh, pulled them all up here. Mm -hmm. Trend, uh, trend Bolon, is that how you pronounce it? <laughs> uh, results, is that a sales page? I mean, it goes into, it's it has a lot of content and then we have a pitch at the end, yeah. Sales pitch. I don't know if it's, it's just me, but I'm not hearing anything. Yeah, we seem to have lost audio. No, still can't hear you, <laughs> yeah, Stefan. Nope. Sounded a bit crackly and then it disappeared. No. <laughs> No, not hearing anything. No. <laughs> um, it might be worth just trying if you can close the webinar down and come back in, it might, might be worth trying. Definitely need to move to Zoom. <laughs> this tool is a bit clunky at times. Technology is getting the better of us. All right, am I back? Yeah, we can hear you. Oh, good. <laughs> That's a relief. <laughs> I tell you, I'm 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 not a, a fan of Webinar Jam. <laughs> no, I think I'm on the same page. Yeah, just saying. Okay, so here we go. Back to sharing my screen. That's so these are the top pages. Yeah. And. Let's actually go to the best pages by links. And then I'll show you the best pages by link growth. Because link velocity, like I said, is very important. If we can get more link velocity, we we'll gain more ground than we're losing. That's good. So these are the best pages by links. And this is pretty different, right? There's a, there are some here that are uh, in common with the best pages or top pages, but the best link uh, magnet type pages are like the horrible deadlifts um, blog post and CrossFit memes. Uh, what else we got here? We got best testosterone boosters, best fat burners for women. Yeah, one of the very best performing pages is a blog post, horrible deadlifts from the CrossFit games. So is, is that a surprise? Uh, no, it's not a surprise. It's a super old post that went re really, really viral in like four years ago or three years ago or something. 
four years ago. Yeah, 2014. Yeah. It's a pretty small blog post. Like, there's not a lot of content here. Yeah. But you haven't done anything to revive this, which is a real shame. Like this blog post, or yeah. So it, remember, I, I gave an example earlier in the previous uh, webinar, where I talked about how um, uh, Backlinko has this um, uh, strategy of updating their cornerstone content pieces and making significant updates as well as changing the up the, the last updated date. So you would change this August 6, 2014, which immediately dates this blog post and makes me not want to read it or even click on the, your search listing when I see it in the search results because that date will probably show up there. And we make it a very recent date, but it's not the only thing we change. We make significant updates to the blog post itself has have there been any f further crossfit games since 2014 oh yes of course many do you think there have been other horrible deadlifts <laughs> probably yeah for sure okay so did this occur to you that maybe you should do an update uh to this blog post and not this in particular, no. We've only like relaunched articles that that uh, have, uh, I don't know, potential to make make uh, money. But uh, I guess I haven't seen it your way, which is which is a good way. So it's a nice yeah. suggestion. Yeah. So this is the this blog post doesn't necessarily bring in money directly, but it sure does bring in money indirectly because yeah. it's the 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 way that link authority or link equity works is a rising tide that lifts all boats. Every sales page will benefit because of this influx of new link equity, because this is a newly revived viral blog post. Yeah. Yeah. It makes a very sense. good strategy. And you, and you want to focus your energy on the things that are going to really move the needle. There's so many blog posts that you could update. This one is the starting point, though, because it's already been a top performer, right? So yeah. this is one of the, this tool is your new best friend because you've already signed up for it, and the, the, this is gold right here. This best pages by backlinks will tell you where to start your focus, where to put your efforts, right? How about okay. CrossFit memes? What are you doing there in terms of? Uh, uh, updating, refreshing your CrossFit memes? Nothing, nothing. Okay. There's uh, definitely some opportunity there, right? Yeah, for sure. CrossFit is still a thing, and uh, memes are still a thing. Yeah. So it's like uh, chocolate and peanut butter, right? The <laughs> They go great together. So let's uh, yeah. let's capitalize on that because those, those, those have done well in the past. Uh, what about what about this best HGH supplements? Is that something that's more of a sales page than a content page, or more of a content page? Uh, more of a sales page rather than a content, but it's like it's like before. It's also content. All right. If it's an important sales page. Don't you think you're doing yourself a disservice by saying that this is updated or that this is from a year ago now? Yeah, like we, I, this, this is, is old news, for right? Yeah, 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 exactly. It's true. Yeah. So let, let's do an update to this. And uh, what else can we do to update this blog post besides just change the date? Because that doesn't, that doesn't fly if all we're doing is changing the date. Yeah, we'll find something to add in, add, add in more relevant information and stuff. Yeah, but I would also change the style of uh, of this so that it's got some of those um, secret sauce elements that uh, are are listed in the Backlinko article. Okay, you're already doing some of it, but you could do this a lot 
you could you could up it another level. Mm. Like this is an example of a bucket brigade. That's great. It's a, that's a solid paragraph right there. I'm not going to stop reading at the point. That's far from the truth. Like what? What? <laughs> like I got to keep reading. That's yeah. perfect. And yeah. we got to do a lot more of that. We got to break up the text more. Um, before and afters are very compelling. So that's great. Um, we could do an update by adding some additional before and afters, I'm guessing. Right, you probably have more, uh, you have yeah, access yeah, to some more of those. Sure. Okay, awesome. And then the, the Q&As, uh, the FAQs. Mm -hmm. Are these the questions that are stopping people from buying, like if they don't get the answers to them? Like, I would assume that, and they're also just, you know, uh, LSI keywords that we have found, you know, related to the main term that people also search for. Yeah. What are you, how are you finding these as LSI keywords? What tool are you using? Well, we were just using Moss, I think, for this one and just, you know, do a Google search ourselves. Okay. So Moz See Keyword Explorer. Stuff. Yeah. All right. I mean, that's one uh, solid tool, but you should probably use other keyword research tools as well. Uh, I'm yeah. partial to, uh, well, SEM Rush is one, Search Metrics is another. I love their uh, topic explorer. Um, have you had a look at the, um, uh, the, the content gap tool in Ahrefs or the keyword gap tool in SEM Rush? No, I have not. Okay, so this is really, really cool. And see, we're doing we're doing the half and half thing that you guys all voted for, uh, <laughs> right? Right now, right? We're I'm seamlessly working it in here. So we're going to take a look at the content gap between you and a top competitor who's still crushing it. They they didn't uh, take a nosedive after August first. So let's uh, let's let's get a give me a a, a website that's. Com direct competitor who is doing super well in, in uh, Google and is continuing to do so. Uh, wow, that's, uh, I don't know. Andy, do you have any <laughs> suggestions? Yeah, let me uh, confirm. Um, I like, haven't really, you know, checked who's who's still doing good or or, or anything. So probably ironjunkies.com. Would be a good one. Iron junkies, are you sure they're still ranking really well? Uh yeah, for certain key keywords they're definitely uh so if I take the keyword legal steroids, for example, in my results, they occupy the first three places for that search term, which is quite a high traffic search term in this niche. Okay. So legal steroids. What about men's health though? That's a pretty popular website. Uh, it's, it's much broader than you guys, but... We can learn a lot just by analyzing what what they're winning at. And we don't have to go after everything that they're uh, doing well at. But we do want to see what the content gap is. What's the difference between their rankings and mine? What keywords are they ranking for that I'm just nowhere for? Yeah. And then I can take my pick from those and say, ah, oh, those are some great keywords. Now, these ones I don't care so much about, but boy, a lot of these are great uh, new, n new ideas for content pieces for me. All right, so ironjunkies.com and menshealth.com. Let's, uh, let's do it. Here we go. Uh, content gap tool. So we're going to put in um, uh, menshealth.com and ironjunkies.com. And you can come back and use this tool later and add some more. You can use the plus sign there. You could add a whole bunch. 
So let's have a, have a look here. And I would recommend ticking this box. At least one of the targets should rank in the top 10. And the reason why is because if, let's say men's health is ranking on page eight for, uh, I don't know, health or something like that. There's some really generic thing or, or not even relevant thing. Like it's ranking for Facebook. <laughs> uh, okay, that's totally not useful for me. If it's a high ranking keyword though, it's probably pretty relevant to men's health, which is your your niche. That's part of your, your, your universe. We'll see what this looks like with and without the, the check, uh, the check mark. So let's do it with the check mark as I recommend. So cranking through here, doing its analysis. And here we go. Now these are keywords where you are not ranking at all. You are invisible. How the heck are you invisible for creatine? You just decided you want to you don't want to rank for that. Oh, that's that's outside my that's outside my niche. <laughs> yeah, we haven't done any blog posts on it before. Yeah, time to start. I think. Would you yeah. agree? Yes, of course, it's, definitely. Especially since they're a product now to promote, so it's good. Yeah, good. All right, Widowmaker. Interesting. What what is that about? Um, is that's like a heart attack? Uh, uh, related <laughs> thing. Yeah, so maybe look into that, see what that's about. High fiber foods, do you talk about that at all? You must not, you're not ranking anywhere for it. Yeah, no. Is that part of, um, you know, the kind of the, the keyword universe that you would like to rank for? Will that bring in um, mm -hmm. people who are health conscious that might want to get uh, some of your stuff? Or not too much. I mean, yeah, not too much. Okay. Yeah, no problem. Because there are going to be things that you're going to be like, okay, well, menshealth.com is so broad. It covers sex. It covers, um, you know, like uh, heart attacks and strokes and all that sort of stuff. It talks about um, uh, psychological health. Yeah, like uh, blue balls. Like I don't know if you want to write about blue balls, but you're not currently not. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you you can have a look through here, and then you start digging into some of your competitors and say, well, these competitors are broader than I am, but uh, they are crushing it in a, a range of different keywords that <clears throat> are bringing in the exact target audience that I want to have. To my site that now this will make a lot more sense if I give you a tangible example now this is not an example relevant to your industry but I think it's it's going to be very illustrative for you imagine if you were selling baby furniture online like baby bassinets baby cribs you would target keywords obviously like bassinet baby bassinet baby crib baby cribs cribs etc that's fine. And you also want to go after keywords that are not obvious, but are attracting your exact target audience that you're, you're, you're looking to target, which are in this case, in this hypothetical case, what? Yeah. Expectant parents. What do you think expectant parents are searching for? on Google right after they find out the sex of the baby, they just had the ultrasound and they're super excited. It's a boy or it's a girl. What are, what are they searching for in Google as soon as they get home? What do you think? Uh, you know, baby clothes or something? <laughs> I don't know. Baby names. Yeah. Baby names. And it makes a ton of sense once you do the keyword research and you see how popular baby names is as a keyword versus baby furniture and baby bassinets and baby cribs, it's orders of magnitude more popular. What you need to find are the baby names equivalent in your niche. Because yeah. even though these are not direct sales type keywords, like they're keywords that are more purchase intent keywords and then they're keywords that are more informational 
and, and more awareness kind of consideration type keywords. This is early on in the buyer journey. They're not even thinking about outfitting the baby's room yet. They're thinking of a name. What's the good name? And this is exactly the time where you can inject your buying criteria into the equation and steer them in a completely different direction that they were than they were thinking they might or than they would probably go down. So you can offer them all this wonderful baby name related content, overused baby names, baby name meanings, cute baby names, baby names that'll get you your kid beat up on the playground when he or she, you know, is, is school age, you know, all that sort of stuff. Great content, but then you want to sell, but it's too early to start selling. So you want to influence the buying criteria with uh, something like a an essential nesting checklist. Like this is the thirty the thirty one things you absolutely need for your baby's room when you're ready to start thinking about that. So download it now, and there's a button there to click on to give me my free checklist. Right, it should be in first person, not second. Uh, the button language uh, verbiage. Click on it. A modal box comes up like a, uh, a lead box, if you're familiar with lead pages. And yeah. it's already got the progress meter at 50%, first name, email address. So they're, you're, you're making this a giving page initially, not a taking page by asking for the email address and all that after they click the button on the modal box. And then once they provide, the, and they're going to be more likely to opt in, in, in this kind of structure than if you ask for that straight up uh, on, on the page. You put it in the right-hand column, which is the save column. That's where people look before they bail from your site. That's the last place they look is over in the right-hand column. So that's where you put your irresistible offer, like in this case, the essential nesting checklist. And you can just think, what are my industry equivalents to this whole scenario? What's my essential nesting checklist uh, uh, version? What's my version of the ba uh, baby names uh, type of content and keyword that I'm trying to figure out? And how do I get early on in the buy cycle of the buyer journey where they haven't even started thinking about the, the supplements or uh, the, the bodybuilding regimen or whatever? Like, what are they thinking about? You need to kind of go several steps ahead than, you, than you've ever gone and open yourself up to a whole range of new keywords and um, identify the sites that are just crushing it for some of those keywords and capture their entire list of keywords using a tool like Ahrefs or SEMrush and then cherry pick the best ones that are relevant enough to you and your, your, your target market and are attainable over time. You might not rank on page one initially, but it's definitely doable. If you're never going to rank on page one for it, don't even bother because you'll be invisible. And uh, so relevant, popular with searchers, it's got a lot of search volume and attainable. So those are the three criteria that make a keyword uh, a, a good fit for you. And uh, we can use this tool, the content gap tool, and we can use the uh, SEM rush um, uh, keyword gap tool. Now it's a different data set, a different algorithm, different tool. So we'll, we'll get we'll get different data from this. I, I recommend both tools. We'll put in. Um, yeah, let's let's put you guys in here. I hate the autocorrect. Are you familiar with uh, SEM Rush? You ever use it? I know what it is, but I've never used it now. This is a great tool. One of my favorite things to look at 
are the featured snippets. This is so ninja. Okay, so what you do is you go to your organic keyword list or competitors. And then over here on the right hand side, you'll see uh, featured snippets is one of the uh, options if you have any. If you don't have any, it won't show up. But under uh, SERP features, if you got featured snippets and you do, yay, good for you. So you, you have 22,000 keywords that you're ranking for according to SEMrush. Now we'll click on featured snippet and we'll see what that drops down to. So 22,000 now, drops down to, drum roll. Three thousand two hundred. So you have a lot of um, featured snippets. That's great. Are you familiar with featured snippets? Yeah. You know, for those of you who aren't, uh, this is position zero. You get to preempt all the organic results with an enhanced version of an organic listing. It's basically the answer to the user's query. Another great tool that you can use to identify some featured uh, snippet opportunities is answer the public. And in Moz Keyword Explorer, there's an option where you can uh, filter down to just keywords that are questions. Do you know how to do that? Uh, no, I don't know how to uh, do that. Yeah, so this is great for creating FAQs. It's great for creating entire content pages around questions, popular questions, uh, to uh, especially featured snippets. And if you can also tie in to this questions that are preventing people from making a purchase decision, that's super power powerful. Like what would be the top seven reasons why people don't buy your products? Uh, is there a money back guarantee or, or I don't know, lots of questions, does it work? Uh, can I see a before and after photo? I don't know. Well, those are questions. I'm actually asking you right now, what are the considerations that make the person choose not to buy from you? Like, for example, it's too expensive. It's unproven. It's not legal. It's going to jack up my biology and it's like it's not going to be good for my health long term. I'm just making these up. I don't know if these are valid. You need to do your own analysis to see if uh, these are indeed the top reasons why people don't buy. But once you identify those, like what? Would you see? Would you say that one of them is uh, it's uh, your products are too expensive? Uh, no, uh, probably. I mean, for some people, yeah, for sure. Okay, that's a typical one. It's usually on most people's lists of the top reasons why people don't buy. Right? It's 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 a big reason why people don't buy from me. I'm expensive, so if I don't address that uh, concern. That, that, that uh, roadblock in my uh, website content, I'm just throwing money away. And I need to do it in multiple places, not just buried somewhere on an FAQ page. Those top reasons why people don't buy from you needs to be all over the place. So that needs to be incorporated into the Q&A that happens at the end of these sales pages. That we one of which we were just looking at of yours, right? That's one of the places you should have. You should address it on your homepage. You should address it um, in in your customer service area of your website, et cetera, et cetera. Makes sense. Yes, of course, makes a lot of sense. Yeah, cool. So let's uh, do a quick uh, look up here of. Um, 
Okay, I'm going to have to log back in. One second. Uh -huh. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a keyword in here. Give me a keyword you'd like to uh, run a query through Keyword Explorer on. Uh, how about... Just best HGH supplements, for example, because you were talking about redoing that one. Okay. I'm going to actually take the best out of there, and sure. uh, that will give us m many keyword suggestions beyond just H. Uh, no, not high. <laughs> Damn, autocorrect. Okay, HGH supplements. Okay, here we go. We're going to get a bunch of keyword suggestions. And what I want to do now is um, let's go to the keyword suggestions tab. Or we can just go to see all suggestions. And here's the magic right here. Instead of the default include a mix of sources, switch it to our questions. Look at that. Is that ninja or what? where to get HGH supplements. What is HGH? Are growth hormones harmful? Do you have a, do you have, uh, are you, do you address this, this question, are growth hormones harmful? Uh, I'm not sure in the, it, that's, except this one, this one, no. But some okay. of these, yeah, for sure. What is HGH? Well, some of them, but yeah, but this one would be a great one to, to because this is one of those considerations, those uh, reasons why people wouldn't buy. Yeah. Because they think it's harmful. They think it's not good for their health long term. You got to address it. Even if you don't give them the answer they want, but you give them an answer, like the answer that you'd probably want to hear it, to the concern about me being too expensive, me, Steph, and Spencer being too expensive is, oh, actually, I'm you know, $1,000 a month to hire me for SEO. That would be the, the answer you'd love to hear. Not going to happen, but I'd have to at least address it. And, you know, may, maybe like if, if a question uh, comes up, like how much does it cost to hire you, Stefan? There, I don't see any prices on the website. I'm not going to put prices on my website. But I am going to address that question because it's a, it's a block, it's a roadblock in, in the buyer journey. So I will address it by saying every client is, is unique. Every engagement is custom. Depends on the, the, the pricing depends on the size of the site, how many sites you have, um, the, the type of site and uh, number of keywords you're targeting and da, 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 da. all these different criteria come into play. Um, the ranges I might give of like, this to that as far as how much it might cost to work with me, but I'm not going to give a price list. I'll never give a price list on my website, but at least I've addressed the question. So you, I, you have to do that. I think all of you guys need to address these questions that your uh, potential buyers are having, even if they're uncomfortable and you don't want to answer them. You got to answer them in a way that um, addresses their concerns. Uh, may not be the answer they're looking for, but at least they're not going away ticked off that uh, they just can't see, get the answers. It's like a, a big unknown. Um, okay, so let's uh, have a quick look here, see if there's anything else. How to use HGH pills. Do you cover that? Yes. Good. Now you see that some of these have no data. The, their monthly volume is is lousy, and that's okay because we're just brainstorming for ideas uh, right now. We're we're not going after that ex explicit keyword phrase. So we're we're in brainstorming mode right now. Another great tool 
uh, to, to do this kind of identifying of, of um, questions, potential uh, featured snippets, and for potential FAQs is answer the public. So let's put in HGH supplements. Let's try that again. Answer the public. All right, so HGH supplements, and what this tool does is it's going to scrape Google Suggest based on the search keyword we're putting in here. HGH. No. Oh, you still with me? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Do you ever use this tool? Answer the public? Uh, yes, I've used it uh, before, yeah. Okay, cool. So I like going to the data view. And you know, who, what, where, when, why type of uh, keywords. Which HGH supplements work? Uh, will HGH supplements make me taller? That's funny. Uh, yes, you'll you'll be you'll be the Incredible Hulk. Um, how to boost HGH supplements? That doesn't even make sense. How to take HGH supplements? Are HGH supplements steroids? There's good stuff in here. So you can uh, um, yeah, do, do lots of uh, uh, digging for great question-based keywords there. Now, if I were to then go back to SEMrush and say, all right, I'm looking at your featured snippets that you're already ranking for, and you might have lost some already because this is a very volatile area. The position zero, uh, featured snippet is something that you might only hold for hours <laughs> or, you know, at best maybe days or, you know, if you're lucky, weeks. So this is one that you've probably already lost, trend balloon and and in state. So let's, let's see what it looked like when you had it. Click on this little SERP um, icon to get the cached version of this page. You can see what you... What it looked like. Okay, where is where's your featured snippet? Well, that's irritating. The cache doesn't work. Okay, <laughs> let's see if you currently have that uh, feature, featured snippet. I'm guessing not. No, Wikipedia has it because the last date that it found it was. Uh, August, I would have been really surprised to still have that. All right, so we're going to go to... Oh, where were we? Oh, got way too many tabs open here. There we go. And what I'm looking for, why I'm looking at your current featured snippets is because I'm trying to find the ones that are weak so that I can shore them up. And when I shore them up, I'm going to in improve the quality of the answer so it's, it's more succinct, it's more punchy, it's a better, higher quality answer when it appears as a featured snippet. And I also want to make sure it's in the right format. If, uh, if it's a how-to query like Mm, I don't know how, how, how to uh, 
how to make your own HGH supplements at home. <laughs> I don't know, right? And that actually yields a featured snippet, but the featured snippet is a paragraph. That's a type, one of the types of featured snippets. There's paragraph snippets, there are list snippets that are either numbered lists or ordered lists, and then there's table snippets. Table snippets are not that popular. It's only like, uh, I don't know, eight to 12% of the time will you'll see uh, table snippets because they're hard for the voice search uh, of Google to read it off as an answer. So the whole point of featured snippets isn't to preempt the first organic result and provide an instant answer. I mean, that's kind of a side benefit. Google's whole mission here is to provide the answer via voice search, not a list of 10 blue links that it reads one after another, but you say, okay, Google, blah, 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 blah. You ask your question and then it comes back with the answer. And it just so happens that the answer came from bro science or it came from men's health or it came from Wikipedia and you got the answer, you're done. So you're providing a bunch of free content to Google that uh, they're going to use to answer the query through, through voice and you're probably not gonna get a click out of that, unfortunately, but you'll, you'll still get uh, plenty of clicks from the featured snippet. It's just voice search is gonna be a big problem for us and uh, you know, like collectively all of us as far as it getting uh, click through traffic uh, over time. So uh, let's find an example where you are ranking currently for it. Best steroid for weight loss. Okay, that was uh, five hours ago they found that. So that's probably still quite fresh. I'm sure you're still ranking for it. Let's have a look. Remember, we're trying to see if it's a weak snippet or it's a strong snippet. If it's a weak snippet, we need to short up before we lose it, before a competitor swoops in and grabs it. This is a numbered list snippet. Best steroids for weight loss. It really is in the right format. Or actually, maybe even a bulleted list snippet um, would be even better. Right? So... It, in either event, it needs to be a list snippet. It should not be a paragraph snippet. So that's good. And um, yeah, it's 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 strong. It's punchy. You've got um, you know nice layout for it. A lot of times, the image comes from a completely different website. In your case, it's coming from you. That's pretty cool. But don't bank on that happening. It's oftentimes from some other random website. But that's cool. Do you, do you see that uh, you're getting a, a lot of featured snippets or um, have you not found a way so far to get a comprehensive listing of, of your featured snippets until now? Uh, we always try to optimize for snippets, yeah. But how do you how do you get a list of all the snippets you've got? Oh yeah, I, I haven't done that. No. Okay, so now you know how. Yeah, sure. Pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. but you you don't have an account to, to SEMrush currently, right? No, only HTRFs. It's yeah. Okay. Ahrefs. Um, yeah, sorry. Ahrefs. Yeah, Ahrefs. I don't think they have this featured snippet capability. They might. Um, I may not have just noticed it yet. It might be new. But, um, yeah, it's such a great feature of SEMrush. I, I really love it. So we get to see, yeah, thousands of featured snippets. And, uh, heck, I could just uh, hit this export button, save all 3,200 to my hard drive, and then shoot that off to Andrew after the, the webinar, and then you can have a dig through it. Sure. Should I do that? <laughs> okay, um, I, I, I will. So um, what about your competitors, though? Your competitors, like Men's Health, for example, which is a broader competitor covering a lot of different um, health-related uh, topics, be a great site because it's so authoritative. It's like WebMD sort of, right? 
you put yeah. these guys into SEM Rush, and you're going to see tons of featured snippets. Is my guess. Let's have a look. Let's see what's uh, what's going on with their featured snippets, and then we could start mining those featured snippets. Okay, so featured snippet. Here we go. Look how many keywords that they're ranking for. Holy cow, 1.3 million. Let's see how many of those are featured snippets. Drum roll. Oh, oh wow, 105,000. Wow, I was impressed with your 3,200. But this is this is insane. These guys are just crushing it. Let's work out. Would you would you say that that's relevant to to you and your yes. your target market? For sure. Yeah. Is that a keyword you're already uh, targeting? No. Okay. Add it to the list. <laughs> yeah. And see what we got to do to steal the snippet away that they uh, they had on September 13th, and they may still have. Somebody's probably got it here. Let's let's have a look. What we got to do is create a better quality answer. In the let's see what the format is. Okay, so Men's Health still has it. I don't love this. I think this is a weak snippet. Here are 16 tried and true workout moves that are proven fat burners. I, w I wanted the best fat loss workout. This doesn't feel like the right answer to me. What would you do differently to make this a better answer? I'm not really seeing what's on your screen. I think it's still loading on our end, the, the web ah. page. Okay, so we're getting a bit of a delay. Yeah. Andrew, can you see my screen? Can you see the mm -hmm. that search result? It's blank at the moment. But you can, yeah, you can kind of imagine that if they're searching for the best fat loss workout, they're expecting the answer you know the best workout not 16 different versions of what could be the best <laughs> yeah and it's not even here let's uh see if i can toggle this on and off again how's that you see my screen now yeah yeah, yeah. all right if i'm querying for best fat loss workout i'm expecting a great answer to my query if i see a featured snippet and this doesn't even, it's not even an accurate, like, uh, synopsis of what I'm looking for. Here are 16 tried and true workout moves that are proven fat burners. I didn't ask for that. I asked for the best fat loss workout. Here's the best fat loss workout. It's got 16 moves that, uh, you can do from home and, or, you know, that you do in the gym and in total, they add up to 15 minutes of workout. And uh, this is the best order to do them in, blah, 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 blah. I would say probably a, a paragraph snippet uh, would be a good format and a much more straight to the point answer to the query would be better and you could potentially steal the snippet away. But you'd have to rank already on page one for this query. So first, the first thing you have to do to, to win this game is just be in the game, be on page one. It is possible to overtake the featured snippet if you're page two or three or four, but it's a lot harder. It's much easier if you're ranking highly and if you're getting higher than normal click-through rate for your position in the SERPs. So if you're number seven in the search results and you're getting higher than typical click-through for number seven, that's awesome. That means you have a really good shot of taking the featured snippet, especially if you've got a crisper, more uh, succinct, higher quality answer to the query. Does that all make sense? Yes, of course. 
All right, so I'm going to leave you with a really uh, useful little article to um, to use as the blueprint for stealing your competitors' featured snippets. It's a, a search engine land article I wrote uh, about six months ago, I think. So it's. Um, how to rank in position zero in three easy steps or something along those lines. Uh, Uh, Andy, did we lose this? Oh, yeah, we lost all the again. I think it's these browser tabs or issues with yeah. this silly software being running through the browser, I guess. Yeah. We moved to Zoom. Yeah. All right, I'm back. Yeah, we can hear you. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. Uh, webinar jam is not my jam. Webinar scam. <laughs> Let's, uh, so what I'm going to do before we're finishing off here, I'm going to just let the other two uh, people that put their hands up into the room, hopefully, by the time we get okay, there. Perfect. Okay, so this is the article that I highly recommend for everybody who wants to uh, do well in the featured snippets side of SEO. How to rank for position zero and three simple steps, a featured snippets primer. And I've included uh, some step-by-step -step instructions, how to get your uh, competitors list of keywords uh, that they're ranking in featured snippets for. Uh, with SEM Rush, how to track your featured snippets uh, listing, uh, your 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 own featured snippets, uh, also with Stat Stat Search Analytics, um, how to find great keyword candidates, who, what, where, when, and why type search queries with Answer the Public, with Moz Keyword Explorer, with the se setting of uh, uh, our questions only. All that is outlined in here, what makes for a, a higher quality, better uh, answer to um, uh, a, a search query that would make it a, a viable candidate for a featured snippet. What you can do in terms of the uh, structure of the HTML, like if you're using li tags, that is um, good for improving the chances of you being used as a as a list snippet, right? So OL or L uh, OL or UL would be an ordered list or unordered list. So one would be a numbered list snippet, the other would be a bulleted list snippet. How to type queries tend to be best. Uh, the most suitable featured snippet would be the ordered list, the numbered list snippet. Whereas um, um, best, uh, I don't know, whatever you know, best uh, supplements for uh, for for cutting or whatever, that yeah. would be probably an ordered. I mean, an unordered list, a bulleted list uh, snippet. All right. So, um, who else do we have in in the room now?
we have James, uh, <laughs> James joined the room and now he's left the room. <laughs> okay. So at the moment, just the three of us. Okay. So let me add a couple other things about the Moz Keyword Explorer tool that I think are really important. Because I, I, I do love this tool. This is a this is a really sweet tool. Yeah, I agree. It's a good tool. I would highly recommend that you use keyword lists. And what you're going to do is you're going to add a bunch of keywords into your keyword list, and then you're going to be able to see um, uh, aggregate data about that keyword list, like average difficulties and uh, or the distribution of difficulty scores and of uh, search volumes and things like that. Some people kind of complain that uh, the the keyword uh, search volumes are ranges. And I, I think it's it's great because the range is there so that it's 95% accurate. It's within a 95% uh, accuracy. In other words, like a standard one standard deviation. That's super accurate. For HGH supplements, for example, it's 95% sure to be within 2,900 and 4,300 searches a month in Google in the US. That's pretty darn cool. Um, so they've done all the statistical analysis to ensure that that's highly accurate. And then you get all these keyword suggestions. You add keywords to a keyword list, and then you um, uh, you can also take that keyword list and uh, go through those keywords and prioritize them. Uh, you can add uh, your your own personal importance. In other words, you could say, well, this is high importance. This is medium. This is low. Right, here's here's the distributions for the group of keywords in the in the list, and you can see here I can add my score is what they call it, and it defaults to neutral. But I could say, oh, this is a really important keyword, and watch what happens when I switch from three neutral then default to ten most. Like this is super high, super high for me personally. Changes the priority from a sixty-one now it's a seventy-five. So do you guys use this uh, capability in uh, Keyword Explorer? Yes, we do. OK, perfect. Yeah, good stuff. Um, difficulty is a very important metric to look at. A lot of keyword research tools don't give you that. They give you CPC, and that is not a good uh, uh, indicator of SEO competitiveness. That's for pay-per-click. You can have a keyword that is very competitive for some stupid reason in pay-per-click, but the people that are ranking for it in, in, in organically don't know SEO from a hole in the ground. They just rank by accident, and it would be pretty easy for you to rank for that keyword. That happens. So CPC uh, is not a good uh, gauge for competitiveness. It's, it's, it's not nearly as good as, as having a, de a dedicated metric like difficulty in Moz Keyword Explorer. Um, all right, let's, uh, let's look at your page speed, because that's something we haven't addressed at all. Back to the technical side of SEO. So we were path of robust.txt and, and, and XML sitemaps, and then we went off on this big tangent. Now we're coming back to technical stuff. So let's do page speed analysis. Of course, there's page speed insights. Not my favorite tool, though, uh, for uh, page speed analysis. This is my least favorite tool. It is free, but so are all the other tools. Uh, GT Metrics is free. Lighthouse, uh, which is a Chrome extension uh, for developer tools, is free. Um, uh, webpagetest.org is free. Uh, testmysite.thinkwithgoogle.com is free. So let's, let's start with PageSpeed Insights. 
Did you get uh, anybody back in the room, Andrew? No, I think we just carry on as we are. Okay. We're just using uh, bro science as the guinea pig as we try out all these different tools. So that's that works. Your page speed is pretty fast. Have you done any um, optimization around page speed? Um, yeah, just uh, a cacking tool and and some minor things and I pick up a good theme and not not optimize the images and stuff like that. Okay. Do you have AMP uh, accelerated no. mobile pages? No. Okay, so that's something I would consider. Um, are you using a, a caching plugin, like yes. W3 Total Cache? Yes. Which one? Uh, WP Rocket, I think it's called. WP Rocket, okay. WordPress Rocket. Uh, cool. All right, I really love this tool. Are you familiar with it? Have you heard of GT Metrics? Yes, I've heard okay. of it and I've used it. You've used it, great. One of the things I really like about it is um, the waterfall. Yeah. I agree. So your Y slow score is not great. It's a C, it's a 72%. So there's some things under Y slow we should look at to see if we can make some improvements there. But the waterfall shows what's loading in parallel and what's loading in serial. The things that are loading in parallel, that's great. But there are things that load serially. In other words, it has to finish before the next thing can start loading. And that's a that's a travesty because that means the page loads a lot slower. Uh, the perceived load time for the user is, is is atrocious then. And it a lot of it has to do with the ordering of the JavaScripts and the CSS and the HTML code. So if we can change that and make that more streamlined, then we can get a lot more of this stuff loading in parallel instead of this thing here is... Uh, what is happening here? What is what's loading? That must be just the HTML. Okay. So what what's happening here is this FB events.js is holding a lot of things up until that's finally finished. And then a bunch of stuff is loading after that. All right. So I'm not a page speed expert. Um, I you know that's that a lot of that is uh, Uber geeky and not that I'm not an Uber geek, but like really heavy into the uh, systems administration, kind of server side stuff. Like, you know, there's basic things you could do, enable gzip compression. There's um, some things you can do to uh, optimize images and minify JavaScript and CSS and so forth. Um, like I said, reordering JavaScripts and and CSS loading. Uh, but there, there's a lot of complexity in this. In fact, there are a couple of great books on this topic if you are trying to do this in-house rather than just hire it out. Um, uh, both are published by O'Reilly. They're by the same author, author Steve Souders. Steve Souders, um, dot com, I think. One book is called high performance websites and the other one is called even faster websites yeah right there they're both they both cover client side and server side one is a little bit more focused on server side than the other um, but yeah both of these are must-haves if if you care about optimizing your uh, your website performance all right so um, C with Y slow. Let's have a quick look at that. Oh, yikes. You got an F for HTTP requests. You got way too many of those. Also an F for use cookie free domains. Also Does it doesn't matter if you typed in HTTP instead of HTTPS. Does that matter in the report? I don't think so. I think it uh, just followed the redirect, but let's let's switch it. We'll give it another uh, another opportunity here. <clears throat> and is it is it important to optimize the the homepage 
because we usually just look at reports for like uh, landing pages and blog posts and you know, all that. Uh, yes, it's important to optimize the home page. More so than the others. Or well, remember uh, your home page was on the top pages list uh, report from uh, Ahrefs, and it was also one of the most linked to pages. Yeah. So yeah, it's important. And you'll see some recommendations that are site wide or server wide. You say, oh yeah, we're not we're not using gzip compression, for example. And that's not just page specific, that's that's site wide. Usually I start by performing uh, this analysis on the home page, but I'll use other uh, important pages as well. And I definitely want to optimize the home page. It's going to be, it probably is the most actively spidered page of your site. Googlebot's hitting that page more than it's hitting a particular landing page or blog post. You know, the only thing it's probably hitting more is the robots.txt file. And if it's spidering it all the time, downloading that page and it's a, it's a slow loading page because you never bother to optimize it. You're optimizing page speed on other pages. Um, that would probably not be good. Make sense? Yes, of course. Cool. All right. Reduce DNS lookups. So that's another one that you might want to look into. The components are split over more than four domains, and then it gives the list. There are 19 components that are not cookie-free. And make fewer HTTP requests. Yeah, so this is still the same, even though we're, we, we uh, switched it to HTTPS. It had just followed the redirect. So GT metrics. Um, webpagetest.org, that's another amazing one. And then Lighthouse. Have you ever tried Lighthouse? Uh, I don't know. Okay, so Lighthouse, it, it, you would know it because you would have yeah. to have gone into developer <laughs> tools in Chrome. Do you ever go into developer tools? No. Okay, so here's what you do. I'm in developer tools uh, here in a second. I'm gonna go view developer tools. Do you see this little icon that looks like a little smartphone and a little tablet? Yeah. I'm mousing over it right now. This is the emulator for mobile devices. I'm gonna turn that on by clicking it and let's reload. And look at that. I am now loading up a, uh, and, and I can choose the device I, I want it to emulate, whether it's an, a particular iPhone or Android phone or whatever. Isn't that nifty? If you have um, Lighthouse Chrome extension installed, then you get this. You can run an audit inside of developer tools. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll do it mobile version, because uh, you know, Google is mobile first now, mobile first indexing. So we're gonna run a performance audit, accessibility audit, SEO audit. This tool is free and it's uh, it, it was coded by Google. So it's from Google for free for you, pretty darn cool. So let's go ahead and get that cranking.
And then another great tool I like, uh, especially for analyzing, specifically for analyzing mobile, is uh, testmysite.thinkwithgoogle.com. Oh, seriously? <laughs> Come on. Almost there. So this is a must-have tool, but it is a little tricky because it does require s some uh, jumping through hoops to get into developer tools and get to the right tab and everything. So here you go. Performance is not so hot. 13. <clears throat> Could be that I'm just on a slow connection or something right now or because of uh, running too many tabs at the same time and too many apps, uh, whatever. But you, sh you should uh, do this at your leisure here. Um, run this report yourself. So performance of 13, that's not so hot. Uh, took a long time for it to paint and the first CPU idle and everything. But like I said, it's probably because of my connection and uh, all the stuff I'm running on my computer right now, including Webinar Jam. <laughs> uh, so have a look through that. This is just really basic SEO checks that it's doing. So don't uh, put much stock in their SEO report. You're way better off uh, lo looking at the SEO quote unquote audit of um, SEM Rush on your site. All right, so um, yeah, GT Metrics. Oh yeah, web page test. That's another one. Um, yeah. and you can change the test location. You could say, well, let's let's try it from. Uh, San Francisco. Let's try from Dallas, from Denver, from Lincoln, Nebraska. And we can choose our browser as well. We can even select from a map. All right, so let's start the test. All right. Um, any questions uh, out there from folks in terms of uh, the tools we've looked at so far, some of the analysis we've done? I've just got a quick question that seems to keep coming up, and it's about um, like thin stroke uh, content that doesn't get much traffic. And we've heard that it, it could potentially eat away at your, what do they call it? A crawl budget? That's the one, yeah, crawl budget. And so a lot of affiliates have kind of gone away with that advice and, and started thinking about culling content from their blogs that doesn't get search traffic um, or is quite thin. And just looping back to the comment earlier about potentially reworking content over to more looking at quality over quantity. What's your advice to people on, on that topic, really? Yeah, so I would yeah. concur, so I would concur with, with the... the, the oh, I'm hearing my own voice. Uh, somebody's broadcasting my voice through the speakers. Okay, so that, that went away. I would concur with the advice, but I would not uh, agree with the reason for it. Or the, like, it's not about crawl budget. So let me first clarify crawl budget. And then there's this other thing that you probably aren't aware of. Most SEOs even are not aware of, and that's index budget. Google has a separate index budget for your website, separate from the crawl budget. Crawl budget is just so that your site doesn't get too overwhelmed by uh, Googlebot. And if you have an enormous website for a small amount of link equity, 
you're not an important site and an authoritative trusted site as far as Google sees, and you get an enormous amount of content, million pages or something, that doesn't bode well for you. So from a crawl budget perspective, yeah, that's problematic. But from an index budget standpoint, you could end up um, squandering crawl budget, but not index budget, or squandering index budget, but not crawl budget. Let me give you a, a technical example of that. Let's say you, you're using disallow in your robots.txt. So you're using these disallow directives and you're stopping Googlebot from spidering these pages. The problem is you're not actually dropping these pages out of the index. So let, let's, let's find an example of that. Um, let's go to... Um, um, I'm just going to see if <laughs> moreniche.com has, uh, has this problem. Cause I, I, we already saw the bro science, uh, robots.txt is only a couple of lines long. So what I'm looking for is disallow directives. And it's like, oh, don't go here, don't go there. Okay, you got the same uh, same thing as as bro science. If um, you know, let's look at uh, Amazon's, and you, you get a sense for this. So in in uh, the robots.txt, you're going to see disallow directives, and these disallows say to Googlebot, don't go here. Don't go into GP slash your store and GP slash gfix and GP uh, slash reader. And yet, um, let's, uh, let's try this here. Let's pick one of these. Let's do GP uh, sign in. So we're trying to potentially, uh, probably get Googlebot to drop these pages from the index so they're no longer in the search results. Let's see if that's working for Amazon. This page has been disallowed. Let's see if it's showing up. Oh, hello. What's that? It's in the search results, but it was disallowed. So, you, so you, you end up with a worse situation than you had if you had just left things well enough alone. You have a crappier search result that says no information is available for this page. And a lot of times the, um, the title will just be the URL instead of, uh, in this case, it's, it's still retaining a title. But you've told Googlebot to stop spidering this page. And really what you meant to tell it is to stop indexing the page. So no index, especially uh, m most appropriately done as a meta robots tag, meta robots, no index, not as a no index directive in robots.txt because that's unofficially supported, could be dropped anytime by Google, and it's not supported at all by Bingbot. So it won't work only for Google and who knows for how long. So you're better off just using the meta tag and if you've got it in the meta tag, you have to remove the disallow directive from the robots.txt file. Otherwise, Googlebot will never go and check out the page content, the HTML source, and see that it's a meta tag there. And so it'll never obey the meta tag, the no index. And it'll never drop this from the search results. So because this is being disallowed, I'm not squandering crawl budget, but crawl budget's not the problem here. Amazon has, you know, it, it's got practically infinite crawl budget because it's such a major important site. Index budget is m scarcer and more important, and they are not um, saving any index budget with the disallow. It's still in the index. It still shows up. I can do a site colon, and here it is, right? So you see how that's, um, those are two unique things. And if I am trying to um, eliminate thin content, so I agreed that we should eliminate thin content, but not for the reason that we're trying to preserve crawl budget. 
But instead, if you think of it like this, like you have your website is like a tree and you have a whole bunch of branches of this tree. Each web page is a branch of your tree. And you got a lot of low quality, thin content pages. Oh, there's only a hundred words on this page, <laughs> you know, that sort of stuff. Those are unhealthy looking branches. And if you have too many of those unhealthy branches, your entire tree looks unhealthy. It looks like something that Google wants to stay the heck away from. That's not good. It would affect your entire site to have too many thin content pages. That's what I want to avoid. That's why I'm saying no to too much thin content. Um, another thing that uh, ties back into the August 1st uh, Google Medic update is the quality rater guidelines. Remember, we were talking uh, at the beginning of the last webinar about EAT. Do you guys remember then the quality rater guidelines? There's um, uh, you know, there's stuff in there about page quality and all that. So uh, imagine if there's references in there about thin content, which there are, doesn't talk about branches of the tree and the whole tree being unhealthy. I mean, that's my analogy. But if you think about how this dovetails almost perfectly with the quality rater guidelines and how important it is to have something that looks trustworthy and valid and valuable. I mean, it totally just doesn't it make sense that um, th this uh, topic space of health, wellness, um, home remedies and uh, supplements and uh, medicines and all that sort of stuff, it, the stakes are really high if Google promote something to the top of the search results that is yeah, snake oil or worse. It's actually something that's quite detrimental to people's health. They go some, for, for some alternate remedy that ends up costing them their life, for example. The stakes are high here. It's like it, it, it is, um, you know, your life on the line here. Whereas if it's just, uh, I don't know, water filters or something, um, you know, you, just, you end up buying a bad water filter and it's not the end of the world. So the stakes are high. Google has put your industry in its crosshairs because it's such high stakes. It really needs to get it right in terms of authoritativeness, expertise, the trustworthiness, the lack of, uh, you know, sketchiness and lack of um, stuff that makes it look suspicious or potentially um, not legit. Too much thin content would make you not look legit. If we're looking at EAT and um, authoritativeness and you looked at the Bro Science site, what would your thoughts be? Yeah, it, it, it doesn't strike me as uh, having a lot of EAT. I mean, the link profile, we saw that is uh, problematic from the uh, link detox. And um, also, if we pull that up in Majestic, we compare the trust flow to the citation flow. Another easy way to spot that we have a problem. But just looking at the content, if I'm a quality uh, rater, like a, a human reviewer working for Google. And I'm trying to determine, is this a legitimate site that's not going to give people bad advice that could make them sick? Right. I, I don't want to put something in front of a, a searcher that ends up getting them some sort of FDA recalled uh, supplement that's really bad for them. So this is another ex uh, hallmark of a problem with trustworthiness. So EAT, so the T in, 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 in uh, EAT, lower trust flow than citation flow, and, and not just by a little bit. This is a significant enough differential 
that you're skewing towards less trusted, more important. Not good. We want to be the other way around. So looking at the page copy and the just the overall content of the site, pretending I'm a quality rater, like let's have a look at the about me page. Is this credible? No, it's not credible. Hey brother, I'm James. Like really? I call bullshit. Okay. So it, 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 does this guy have credentials? Heck, he doesn't even have a last name. And he doesn't have a picture. He's got a like a cartoon. I'm not going to take health advice from a cartoon. So if I'm a quality rater at Google, I'm giving you the big X. Have, have you gotten this feedback before? Uh, no. We have not. That does it make sense? Uh, you know, if you uh, tie this into what you've uh, learned already from the uh, quality rater guidelines, that 160 page document that I mentioned in the previous webinar, do you see how? Yes, it does make sense. It? Yeah, so the implications here are pretty huge. Yeah. And I have a feeling that a lot of the uh, folks on the webinar have this problem where. They don't have an, enough legitimacy. They, they don't have uh, a real person. They might have a fake persona uh, instead of a real person. They're using stock photo, uh, photography uh, that they found online instead of uh, you know, themselves or, or one of their team. It's a problem. And then even if you do have a real person with a real photo and a real last name and everything, and you don't have credentials, like I'm just a guy who is jacked <laughs> and I'm, I've been hitting the gym for years. I mean, I, clearly I'm not jacked, but you know, it, it, that doesn't make me qualified to give you health advice. Oh, you got an MD, PhD. Okay, now I'll listen. Now I'll put you at the top of the results. So that's the E in eat, expertise. And also A, really, because A, A, authoritativeness is partially about you proving yourself to be authoritative, but it's as, as much or more about people saying you're the authority. If all these links out there uh, tell Google, like, this is the authority right here. This guy, bro science, he's the authority. And that would ha only happen if you had the right kind of metrics that go with those uh, high quality links, which we don't have right now. We've got just massive amounts of toxicity. But, you know, it's not, this is not a, uh, a doom and gloom webinar here. This is, this is all very fixable. It's just, we got to, um, we got to shine light on what the problems are. And if nobody's ever brought this to your attention, like how, how do you know to fix it? Now, now you do. So I know we're down to the, the tail end here. We got nine minutes left. Um, how do we best want to use this? Do we want to uh, open this up to more questions from the audience? Uh, do we want to pull up one last tool? Do we want to look at uh, some link detox scores of a few other sites, just to people who are, are sticking around to the end or are still in the audience. What, how, how, what do you think, Andrew? Um, I think, so there's a few people that have put their websites up but haven't managed to get into the room. Um, so maybe we could run, run the link detox on, on a few domains just so that people kind of get that same message Again, that, you know, the okay. trust is Yeah, so the problem with doing this on the fly, if the, I haven't already run the Link Detox report, it takes a, a while. Uh, the webinar will be finished by the time uh, the Link Detox is completed because it crawls through their entire link profile. So we can do a Q&A. So, um, and we can run the, we can run the Link Detox. The, the mentors can run that for them on their behalf. 
Um, yeah. So one question related to the previous topic was is basically asking, does it mean that only MDs, PhDs can create health related websites? No, not at all. But it does mean that the more uh, that you address y your expertise and your uh, your qualifications, the, the the better you'll do. And the funny thing you know, is think about it, that um, Google isn't just ascertaining the quality of your content, and the quality of your website. They're ascertaining the quality of the content producers. The content mm -hmm. creators are getting rated as well as the pieces of content that they create. Yeah, the funny thing is most affiliates, well, a lot of affiliates will outsource their content. And yeah. so they'll go onto the likes of Upwork and they'll find qualified people that probably want the extra attention um, but instead of utilizing all their qualifications and actually saying, hey, this really qualified person created this bit of content, they choose to not leverage that value that they probably paid for in the original piece of content. Yeah. And, and it's so super simple to have a about us page that has lots of authors that have lots of qualifications. Um, but it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's just the way that it's evolved, I guess. Yeah, exactly. I, I'm totally on board with that. And here, here's the hypothetical situation that I think a lot of people would uh, relate to is you're, uh, you're getting content from Upwork or Text Broker or Amazon Mechanical Turk or whatever. And you're slapping it up on the website with either your name associated with it or a fake persona's name. And instead, what you could have done is, uh, if, if it was a content producer who had credentials, getting their name associated with it, so getting permission to use their name and their likeness with the content piece, or to get a site um, owner, kind of ed editorial manager type person, like on Upwork, Craigslist, what have you, and take that person. The person is only going to get hired if they're willing to have their name and likeness associated with the site. And so they're the overarching person with the credibility. So that's one of the criterion you're going to use to determine whether you're going to hire this person at whatever, 15, 20 bucks an hour, whatever it is, 10 hours a week to be a site manager or editorial manager. Uh, content manager, whatever, right? That person now has, you're writing on the coattails of their credentials, even though you're still using text broker or whatever, or you're stripping the, the n names and the credentials from the people who are content producing for you from Upwork and all that, but you're still leveraging that editorial manager's credentials. I think that's a very, uh, valid approach. Perfect. Thank you. Yep. Thor, do you have any questions? Because um, we're not having really many questions from the group. So, Thor, if you have a, any questions, now is the time. Yeah, thank you. Uh, uh, no questions, really. Just thank you for taking the time to do this. It's good stuff. Awesome. You are welcome. I think for you, so, um, you know, I know you guys personally, I know you and I know Gumi, oh, you live and breathe this, you know, you're in the gym every day, you've got the physiques, that you can put yourselves into that, into that authoritative position. Um, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't hide behind the, uh, the avatar. And I think you build your own authority on your own properties, but also externally as well. And you become those authorities, I think, you know, that makes complete sense. Yeah, for sure. That's great advice. Cool. Another thing that you could do to establish uh, 
some credibility beyond just the before and after photos, which are really great social proof, is to get high credentialed, uh, high like celebrity status people to go through your program and uh, get their before photos and their after photos, maybe even get video. All it takes is one kind of Dr. Oz equivalent type person who's got celebrity status, who had uh, uh, issues with weight or with not bulking up enough or whatever, and they go through your program, use your uh, regimen, your supplements, et cetera, and they get an amazing result before and after, boom. That's uh, that's some serious credibility there. Yeah, thank you. That's good yeah. stuff. Yeah, even if you donate the product and your time and stuff, like back in the day, uh, I don't know, this was like 2001, uh, when we were doing SEO for our e-commerce clients, but we didn't do SEO audits yet for other clients, like big name uh, retail brands and stuff. And we really wanted to get into that space. We didn't have the credibility yet. So we did a free full scale comprehensive SEO audit in exchange for a testimonial. And we offered that to target target.com. So we did our very first SEO audit uh, for a big brand was actually completely free, but we got the, the use of their logo and their, uh, their testimonial from them, which was awesome. And it got us a ton of business. So if you think like, how can I leverage that idea in, in, in my business? I think that would be really cool too. Yeah. It makes it up. Amazing. Thank you very much. No, Stefan, for your time. Yeah, of course. Uh, I think we're going to uh, get a lot of people watching this back and, and taking a lot of value from that. Um, and it, it's going to dovetail into an article I'm working on at the moment, uh, which is titled 10 Reasons Why You'll Be a Broke Affiliate in Six Months' Time. <laughs> uh, and it's a bit of a fun piece, but it, it basically highlights uh, through um, – all of the, the Google algorithm updates and all of the feedback that I'm getting from affiliates yeah. about why um, some of the mistakes that people are making and, and a lot of the content from these um, webinars is, is helping build that up. Um, and, and I think there were an interesting crossroads in both the industry and, and with the affiliate uh, network in general. Um, and the people that are going to be successful in six months, 12 time of people that are listening to these webinars that are evolving and, and take this information um, back to the office and make the changes that we're suggesting. So, yeah. I agree. I agree. And that um, reminds me of a, of a really cool little strategy uh, when you describe that article you're going to write that reminds me of something called the evil twin strategy, which is where you, let's say you have an article about like these are the 10 best practices to future proof your website for SEO if you're an affiliate or something like that. And the evil twin is where you take that same article and you spin it a different way so that it's the opposite. So these are the worst mistakes to make if you want to make sure that you just get decimated uh, by Google in the next six months or so, like what you were just saying with the, uh, the biggest mistakes, uh, to avoid, um, you know, that you'll end up being a broke affiliate if you're, uh, if you're doing these things in six months time. So the reason why you do the evil twin strategy is because you've got, you've put all this effort into some amazing piece of content and you're going to just publish that on your website and not share it anywhere. Like you're not going to get it published on menshealth.com, for example, if you get a, a, a contributor uh, ship there or con a column there. But mm -hmm. what if you do have a column there on menshealth.com or some other high, high authority, high trust website? Do I take this amazing content piece that I work so hard on and only post it there? Give it away, give my hard earned, uh, my, uh, my, my, my blood, sweat and tears and, and this article away t for free so they're, they're like men's health is getting free content without you know paying me for it. 
No, you do the evil twin and then you get the best of both worlds. One place gets the evil twin and one place gets the, uh, the original. Maybe mm -hmm. the original gets posted to your site and the evil twin gets uh, submitted to men's health or vice versa. Yeah, no, great bit of advice. Yeah. Perfect. All right. Good time. Uh, if anyone has questions, um, yeah, just send them through to your mentors. And there's obviously a lot of advice coming through the network. So, um, yeah, hopefully you found this useful. Thanks, Stefan. You bet. Bye, guys. Bye. -bye. Bye.